I'm really struggling this Wednesday, guys. I didn't really sleep last night. I don't know why. I barely got any sleep last night, so I am I am truly not functioning all that well. Why did I decide to choose today to film a video? The world will never know. But here we are, we're talking about drugstore beauty. I had mentioned on Instagram that I had a vague curiosity to re-enter the drugstore beauty world and find out what was going on over there just because it had been a while since I had ever looked at even what was being offered. I am very familiar with the key drugstore brands. I'm aware of what's going on. I used to work briefly through an agency, but I used to like work for one of those drugstore beauty brands. So I'm, I'm very intimately familiar with the world. I couldn't tell you who they're marketing to these days because I know that I'm not really shopping at the drugstore, my mom's not really shopping at the drugstore, and the teens I know aren't really shopping at the drugstore. So who is actually shopping there these days? I have no idea. I didn't even go to the drugstore. I didn't even go to Target. I was I was this close. I was gonna go to Target. I was so close to going to Target. I it's been it's been a moment since I went to a Target, and as we all know, that can be a, a dream fulfilled to to just wander those those halls and see what's there. But I didn't even do that. I did just place a small order through Ulta. I have a little grouping of drugstore products that I decided to try in front of me. I fully anticipated coming to you to do this video and having a very flat line kind of response, very mid response to what I tried and tested. But I'm pleased to report that it's a lot more up here and down here. Like we're either we're, we're either really setting a high bar or we're like bottom of the trash barrel. So let's start with a few things for base. Now the first one I'm cheating a little bit because I didn't buy this for my most recent like drugstore testing haul, but I did want to talk about it a little bit because by all accounts it is considered a drugstore brand and that's about face. For me, I don't truly consider it a drugstore brand because I don't see it at my CVS and that's usually what I think about when I think about drugstore beauty, but this is available on a lot of drugstore and drugstore adjacent places like Walmart, etc. So, you know what? We're going to we're going to consider drugstore about face. This is the Performer Foundation. I was very skeptical about this, but I was really excited when it came out because I do enjoy some of the about face products. They're very like hit or miss for me, but I was excited because this did look like a good everyday kind of foundation and the color range seemed to be quite good, at least at first glance. To start, I do have the shade L2 Neutral, and it is what I'm wearing on my face today. This is an insanely good color match for me, like really, 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 really good. And that's the first thing that I noticed was that I typically, when I'm trying a new foundation, I don't always have that easy of a time getting to my actual shade. I'm a little bit in between a bunch of different shades, which can make it difficult. And it allows me to be very like flexible because I can usually make a lot of things work for me. But to find something that right off the bat is such a good shade match is not that easy. And this is probably my perfect shade. The first thing that I noticed with this is that it does feel like it has a little bit more viscosity than a typical skin tint, but it wears like a skin tint. It does have buildable coverage. It does have a mildly dewy finish. I would say somewhere between dewy and satin, truly fallen in love with this. Like I can't even explain it. It snuck up on me. I didn't expect to love it. I didn't expect to rave about it. I was just like going about my business, living my life. And then all of a sudden about face came and smacked me in the face and said, here, you're gonna like this. And they were right, I do. I really like it. My big qualm, and I'm gonna show you, is I always have to do this slowly because if I don't, I splash it. It's a doe foot applicator, which I actually have decided I don't hate. I was really skeptical about this when I picked it up that you know the doe foot was gonna be sort of the best choice. I do like applying the foundation with this. I find it easy to sort of spread around my face and get a nice thin layer, but there's gonna come a point at which truly not able to get much out of this, even though there's probably more product in here. And that I find frustrating. Like I know that there's gonna be waste involved with this. And the other thing is that every time I pull this out, I've kind of splattered a little on my desk or my pants. And that is a giant pet peeve with me. Like I have to be so, 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 so careful not to get it everywhere. And that's frustrating. For me and the kind of middle 
ground coverage that I like, this is such a great foundation. So enough blabbing on about that. I do really like it. Part of my drugstore order to specifically try drugstore products was like, I wanna try a true drugstore base brand. Like what's, what's out there these days, what's new? And I came across this. I hadn't heard anything about this. This is the Revlon Serum Skin Tint? Serum Tint, Broad Spectrum 15. Ignore the fact that this is SPF and A. <laughs> you don't, don't use this to replace your SPF. And it's also only 15. It says it has ginger root, vitamin C, and vitamin E in it. And it also has the word illuminance on it, which I'm still not positive is a real word. Illuminance? Illumination, sure. Illuminance? I, English people, come for me. Is it is it real or not? But anyway, this was new from Revlon. I picked up the shade 209 and it's described as skincare infused makeup, light to buildable coverage, soft satin finish. And I was like, okay, that sounds plausibly like in my wheelhouse up my alley. I took a chance on color, whether or not this was going to be <laughs> a workable shade for me. Again, nailed it out of the park. And I'm gonna be inserting throughout this video some clips that I did of a application using all of the drugstore products that I have. Turns out another really excellent shade match for me. So I can't exactly tell how many shades if it's like 20 or something. It's it's not huge. I will say their deepest shade online does not look to be that deep to me. So there's a limitation on, on this product. For me, this is a great shade match and I was shocked, kind of like knocking it out of the park. It is extremely skin-like, but it does still provide that little bit of coverage that you look for from a tint. It's also buildable and I was fully not expecting that to be the case. Usually with products like this, if you try to put on another layer, it just, it's, it's becomes a hot mess. That was not the case with this. It did give me exactly what it said it would, which was like a soft satin finish. It didn't look like I was wearing makeup. It was a great shade match. It wore really well throughout the day. I loved it. My biggest pet peeve about this is that it has a slight scent. Now I will say that I noticed it the most the very first time I used it because I am not accustomed to my base products having any scent. So I was immediately like, oh, that's like perfumey. In truth, it's really not all that strong. It does fade. The more that I've worn this, the less that I've noticed the scent, not the more that I've noticed it. I've been okay with it. <laughs> I've been pretty okay with it. It's been worth it to me to wear something like this. It's such a great dupe for, I feel like other more expensive kind of skin tinty type things in my collection. I really just like how it felt to wear. I feel like I paid $16 for this or something like that through all I really enjoyed this. Check it out. I was fully, fully surprised. Questionable whether or not you would call this a drugstore brand. I'm going to go ahead and say because it was available at Ulta and there's a lot of other drugstore and drugstore adjacent places that carry it. I'm including this REM beauty product that I picked up. REM Beauty, for anyone who doesn't know, is Ariana Grande's beauty line. I was not particularly drawn to the brand upon launch. I'm not like a big Ariana person, but I started hearing about these blushes. I think they went a little viral. There's definitely one of those like bubblegum pink shades that came out. This one is the shade Rose on Mars. It does have this really cute swirly imprint on it that I will say is quite satisfying. It also has a nice soft magnetic closure. The packaging is nicer than I thought it was gonna be. I mean, it's plasticky, but it's not, it doesn't feel like nothing. It has, it's, it has a niceness to the compact. It's, it's better than I thought it was gonna be. Now, the big test for me was how pigmented is it or how easy is it to blend out? Please to announce, very nice. Pigmented, but not to the point where I put it on and I was like, whoa, this is gonna be tough to blend out. I like this so much, honestly, that I am considering picking up another shade. And I've kind of been going back and forth between cream blushes and powder blushes. I feel like I went into an all cream blush moment for a while and then I totally went back to powder and now I just kind of you know switch it up between the two but so far as powder blushes go I really like this I would definitely pick up more shades I think it's comparable to one of my favorite powder blush formulas which is by Make Beauty their skin mimetic uh, suede blushes or whatever they're called I really really enjoy those I was gifted a bunch of them by the brand I use them all the time this is a really good comparable in my opinion kind of formula the other thing that I picked up from REM Beauty 
was this weird looking <laughs> lip oil. This one's called Lavender Kiss. So as you can see, it's got this very interesting looking applicator, which I will get into. There's a few different shades or, you know, types of this lip oil. It has like a slight plumping, but it's so, so slight. And I think maybe the other ones have like slightly different properties. Like there's a minty one, etc. This is very subtle, very nice. And I mean, the lavender color is essentially non-existent once it's on your lips. It's really just for the packaging, but it, it, it's nice looking. The applicator is, I think, kind of a revelation. I've never seen anything like this, and I don't know what made them go in this direction, like what product developer they worked with, but it has that little metal cooling ball in the middle surrounded by this curved soft applicator. I mean, it's fuzzy. It's not so soft. It doesn't have like a super flexible tip to it. It hugs your lips as you apply it, but it also cools your lips as you apply it. I love it. I love it. It feels like it does the best job of applying a lip oil of this kind that you would want it to. So regardless of the product inside, which is not particularly memorable, like the, the product is fine. It's the applicator that actually surprised me enough where I was like, oh, wow, this is interesting. And I, I truly haven't seen it before. And forgive me, I'm sure maybe, maybe there's other brands that are doing that, but I haven't seen them. The combination of the lip hugging shape with the cooling ball, it's game changing. I have two other lip products. This one was also not a part of the haul. This was gifted to me separately. This is the NYX Fat Oil Lip Drip. Sorry. Uh, this, I think, was another product that went a little bit viral, is my understanding, and I'd been really wanting to try it. Very similar, similarly, and in a similar shade, is the Glow Reviver Lip Oil from e.l.f. Which one? Actually, which one did I put on? These are so similar. I can't remember which one I put on over my lipstick, but I put on one of these. I should say that the, the shade I have for the NYX one is Scrollin' and the shade in the e.l.f. is Honey Talks, Honey Talks. These are very similar, even in their applicator, a big doe foot. So you can see the e.l.f. one, big doe foot. This one's pretty creamy and pretty thick, but in a really nice comforting way. This one's a little bit stickier and a little bit goopier, but again, same thick doe foot applicator. Personally, like both, probably if you had to like force me to make a choice, if I was gonna repurchase one, I would probably go with the e.l.f. one. I prefer the packaging. It's a little more minimalist and I prefer the viscosity of this one a little bit more to this one, which is just a little bit thicker and stickier. Not so much so that it would deter me from it, but this one just felt slightly smoother on the lips. If you had to like, you know, put a knife to my throat to pick one, I, would, I guess this is the one that I would pick, but it's not as though I have anything so memorable to say about it. It's they're fine. Let's move on to eyes. I didn't get too many things. I was tempted to get more. As you know, eyes are sort of my vice, but I kept it simple. I kept it streamlined and I just wanted to stay focused. I decided to pick up this eye crayon. I haven't tried an eye crayon in quite some time. It's by CoverGirl. It's called their Clean Eye Color Golden Toffee. That is the shade. It is your typical eyeshadow twist up stick. Really nice under other eyeshadows as a base. It has just enough kind of slight, slight satiny shimmer to it that it can give you a little bit of a glow versus being fully matte. I didn't find it that impactful as a standalone shadow. I did really enjoy using this under other eyeshadow and I found that it helped the wear time of my other shadows quite a bit. This really has great longevity. That's probably the best thing that I'll say about it, the most memorable thing about it. I think there are, there's so many brands that do these and I feel like more people don't talk about them them specifically because they're not always that great of a product. The fact that this one actually stayed on my eyes is a big plus. Next, we have one of these little compact eyeshadow palettes from CoverGirl. I think I misjudged or they were inaccurate as far as what I thought I was getting versus what I actually got. It is called the True Naked Nudes and it is very much a nude little palette, but for whatever reason, I thought it was more more like cool nudes with like maybe a deep navy based on the website. And what it is is a true taupe brown, slightly pinky champagne palette, which I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying that when it came, I was like, wait a second. I thought that was a little different than what showed up, which is very boring. Now, listen, listen. 
I got nothing against boring shades. I love boring shades. I've been kind of in a boring shade mood recently where all I want to do is wear brown and beige and taupe, but nonetheless, I thought that this was a little something different. I did just for fun try doing an eye look using the little sponge tip applicator that they put in the thing that looks like this. Wow, is this ever just literal trash that should be immediately thrown away? <laughs> like, I don't know how they think people can or should do their eyeshadow with this. I know nobody actually ever uses these things, but I, on a whim, I was like, well, they put it in there. Maybe I should try to use it. This is this is this was this was a torture device. It hurt and it did not apply the eyeshadow well. So regardless of that, the palette itself is not bad. It is very similar in formula to actually my favorite drugstore eyeshadow palettes, which are from Revlon. They are the Colorstay color books. I have, I think, every version of those that they came out with like eight million years ago and they are still in my collection and I still reach for them sometimes because they're that good. The formulation, very similar to that. I actually really like this kind of chocolatey satin brown, but most of the shades were a little bit chalky, like the full mattes I found to be a little bit chalky, not that smooth and a little bit patchy. I found the satin shades, the satin shimmers to be much more easy to work with and much more worth my time. I can in good conscience be like, go out and get this. I don't think that there's anything special enough about it. And I'm sure that you, you who are watching this, have a little nude neutral eyeshadow palette already that you certainly don't need to spend money at the drugstore to get something like this. It's nice to know that this exists for somebody who's looking for that like first timer experience, but I think there are better drugstore options out there for shadow than this. Speaking of, I went back to a brand that I already know I really like, and I know that I've liked previous eyeshadows from them, which is Flower Beauty. One thing I have to note about this is that it sucks to open. This package design is like just, it's just not dexterity friendly, just not a nice experience. And the packaging also for this feels cheap. The design of it feels cheap. Like I'm not a big fan of the packaging for this at all, but the product inside is surprisingly nice. This is a really nice quad. This is their Petal Play quad in the colorway Black Iris, and the shades are Clay, Stormy, Fantasy, and Fog. Been reaching for this beyond doing my like purely drugstore looks for testing, and I've really been using this. Like I've been incorporating it into my daily makeup routine. I in particular love <laughs> this like boring suede brown shade. It is a really, really good brown shade on me in particular and my skin tone. There's just something very flattering about it. And the two satin shades in here are really nice. Kind of wish that this gold was a lighter shade than it is because it's not that easy to get a lighter look with this. It does tend to get a little dark, but this slightly gray navy stormy color is beautiful. It adds this mysterious quality to an everyday smoky eye that is subtle, but it's so clearly there. It's really, really lovely. I just, I feel like there's more nuance in this quad than in most of the drugstore eyeshadows that I see. Like this feels thoughtful and the formulas are really nice. So apart from the packaging being a total miss for me, the, the makeup itself is really nice. And like I said, I have been reaching for this. There are a few other colorways that these quads come in. If you are like, I really like the look of those shades, I will say you probably won't be disappointed with the quality. Okay, so I think that's all the drugstore that I have. I would love to hear from you if you have regular drugstore products that are a part of your routine? If you frequent the drugstore, are you a drugstore junkie? Is that your place? Is that your happy place? Are you like me where you haven't stepped foot into that arena in a very long time and you're just sort of curious about what's there? Let me know in the comments. For sure, I'm gonna be keeping my eye, I think, on REM Beauty. That is the most memorable kind of standout products that I tried in this little roundup, apart from the Revlon skin tint, which like I said, I think is kind of a hidden gem. With that, I want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was helpful and enjoyable for you to watch. If you've been curious about any of these things, that this was informative in some way. If you have any questions, of course, let me know. Hit me up. I'm always available on here, on Instagram. I want to say thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here, and I do hope that whatever you are doing, you really enjoy the rest of your day, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Bye!